Census records are very valuable for tracking your family and doing research, finding ancestors and entire family members. You may not be aware that the LDS Church or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints also took a census a number of years. And so today we're going to show you how those records are accessed and what they contain. When did they do a census? The first reference is in the winter of 1852 when we have the Utah Bishops Report. But actually the very first worldwide census was taken in 1914. Then starting in 1920 the, a census was taken every five years up until through 1960. It, with the exception of 1945 during World War II when no census was taken. How do we find these records? They're on FamilySearch.org. Once you navigate to that website, go to the Research Wiki, enter the search term LDS Census in the search box, and follow the links to all of these valuable resources. This shows the website, Family Search, and the search tab. The bottom term is Wiki, so this would show you how to get there. And once you do that, this page, the Research Wiki, will come up. I've entered the search term LDS Census, clicked Enter, and it will take me to the next page. Once there, I click on the top link to the Utah Bishops Report. This is not a true census, but in 1852, the bishop of each ward in Utah listed the head of each family that was attending his ward or branch. This is available as a book, a film, or a fiche, and it has a very fun name. Registry of Names of Persons Residing in the Various Wards as to Bishops Reports. This is incomplete. It only includes Utah, so nobody outside of Utah, and it lists only the head of each family. It's listed alphabetically with the ward attended. So from the um, wiki page on LDS Census, I click on the link. It takes me to this page, the Registry of Names, and I see that there's a digital version of this item available by clicking on this link where it says click here. When I do that, it comes up with the title, Registry of Names of Persons, etc. in GSL or Great Salt Lake City on December 28, 1852. And as I scroll down through this, I would see pages like this it can be a little bit difficult to read, but not impossible. And I can see the name of each male head of household and the ward that he was, where he was residing. What else might be available for the 90 years between 1830 until the first census was taken in 1914? There is a very good resource. It's not a, not a census as such, but it's the Early Church Information File, or the ECIF. And this is an alphabetical card index of Latter-day Saints and some of their neighbors, mainly between the years of 1830 to 1914. What is this? It's an index of more than 1,200 sources and has over a million cards. These cards were then microfilmed onto 75 rolls of microfilm, they are available on Family Search Historical Records. These are not indexed but are easily searchable online. So if you go following the links to the ECIF, you can find it labeled or possibly mislabeled under Utah since it is for the entire church. And it includes all these images from different sources such as church records, journals, biographies, books, immigration records, um, county marriage records, and so on. 
here it tells us that we can browse through 1,091,919 images by clicking on this link. When you click on the link, it will bring up this page. Then you will scroll down, this is only part of the page, scroll down until you find the last name that you're interested in and click on that. And it brought me to this. I am searching for the name Westman, so it's on the Webster Hold to Westison roll. And it shows me that there are 6,364 images. So I start jumping numbers until I get to the name that I'm looking for. I went first to image 5,000, then back to 4,000, and just kept going back and forth until I got to this one, 4,401. And I see my name that I'm looking for, Westman. This happens to be my great-grandmother. There is one page for her. Some people will have more. It gives her birth date, and it tells that she's in a book called Mormons and Their Neighbors, and indexed to over 75,000 biographical sketches from 1820 to the present. And this is available at the Harold Beely Library here at BYU. Can you see how this can link me, lead me to valuable resources about my ancestors? I look at the next card and this shows her one of her daughters. A couple of cards later is my great-grandfather who at age 23 on this card it shows that he got his marriage license and when he was married to whom and who did who performed the marriage. This is from the Salt Lake County book. Again the ECIF can lead you to very valuable resources about your early um, LDS family members. Let's talk now specifically about the LDS Church census records. On Again, you go to familysearch.org, navigate to the research wiki, put in the term LDS census, and it will bring you to this page, the cens church census records from 1914 to 1960, and it tells us that there are 651 microfilm reels so we know that these are not available online and they have not been digitized yet. We can always add that word and be helpful. As I scroll down the page, I find that these are available at the BYU Family History Center and they have 639 of the 640. There's a little bit of a number discrepancy here, but we know that BYU has most of them. We look down through the list and we note the film number for the, for the uh, census records that we're looking for. These are readily available and this is a list of libraries that have these films. <clears throat> they can be ordered into other centers, but these are the larger family search libraries or family um, history centers that do have a complete or fairly complete collection of these LDS Church Census records. As you scroll through looking for the last names that of the families you're trying to research, note that at the end of the alphabets are supplements, so you need to not stop with the end of the alphabet if you're not finding the names you're looking for. The 1914 to 1935 census records are filmed together and they are all alphabetized together so that it's very easy to track a family through the years. 1940 is separate with its own microfilm and two supplement supplemental films. And then the last three census records are filmed together. Again, it's easy to track the family through the census years. Once more, a note, when you get to the end of the alphabet, look for the supplements. Now in 1940, the missions were separate, and so you would need to check through and to, to make sure you haven't missed any available ancestors or relatives that you're looking for. 
Here's the 1914 census, the first one. It shows the family name and the address, the ward and the stake. It shows the family members and their ages. This is the Glade family. I'll look at another family I'm looking for, the Green family, and I get the same information about them. Somebody has written over the names to try to make them a little darker and more legible. I look in the 1920 census and here's the same family but this time the day, month, and birth year have been added so that I, I can see that information very easily. Here's a 1925 census shows that um, my grandfather, who was listed on the previous one as living at home, has now moved out, is married, and they have my mother. So that was pretty fun to see. Here's a 1950 census. In this one, the um, location of birth has been added, the city or town in the state or the country. I actually found myself in the 1950 census. So that was pretty interesting. Well, you can see these LDS census records can be, and some of the others that we've talked about today can be very useful for tracking your ancestors. Have a good time searching and thanks for watching.